Okay, let's continue with this case and let's move now to the anesthetic simulation. So open the coarse mesh. Let's work with the coarse mesh. So you go to the case and you know where, where, where do you instruct. So in, in this case, coarse and go to Urange directory and open the case setup. So this is just the case setup. We have everything. So let's go through this case. So general see that now we change to transient formulation. So the uh, turbulence model we're using KOMX T, but feel free to use any model. We know what we're doing. We have addressed all the theory. Okay, but in this case we are going to run Uran, so stay within uh Spalmaras KX on K Omega. Okay, or probably Reynolds stress also. Uh, nothing else here. Materials, everything remains the same. Uh, boundary, uh, salt zones and boundary conditions also remain unaffected. Reference values again remain unaffected. Now we move to the methods. So here is a little bit different from the uh, from the steady solvers. Okay, here. Oh, excuse me a minute. Okay, so here, here we have access. Uh, to the transient solver. So by default, fluent now is not proposing the couple. So again, you have the couple, but I want to remind you that the couple is, is kind of, is very uh, computational expensive. So it worth using it if you're working with the state solution for on state solutions, it's not recommended, okay? It will slow down the computation. So one, you can do your benchmarking, but you you would realize that. So it's say within this family of solvers, disaggregated solvers, okay? So of all these, probably the best one would be the PISO, okay? So use the full options. And here, transient formulation, remember that now we want good, temporal accuracy, okay? So for the case that we're going to run all runs, this will not be a problem, but as soon as we move to SRS, it is compulsory to stay in second order and even better bounded to avoid oscillations. Okay, the same will be for these variables. And actually, unless probably you, uh, unless you have these variables, in this maybe you will have it. So here will be better to go everything in second order. So just to exercise that, that in SRS, everything must be second order. So put, put everything second order here. Here is stay second order implicit or also bound unbounded. But for Uruns, remember you, you can use this default uh, values with no problem, okay? So go pizza, again, put everything second order. Second order and second order, okay, for this uh, small exercise that we're going to do. Controls, nothing to change here. Default values are okay. Report definition. So here now we have new report definition. So remember that now also we have a, a CFL number. So I have a monitor for, for CFL. And remember that now we want to probe the solution, sample the solution in many locations. So see that I added many probes here, okay? So if we look at the mesh, now I will show you those probes. Okay, look at all these points represent those probes. Okay, so see that in different points I want to sample velocity, pressure or whatever, and then I can use that information to have my energy spectrum. Uh, I, I, there are also some lines that I put there that we can do some sampling there. So see that I put many that lines there. So this is the same when you go on a study and you're going doing things in the right way, you need to add before running the simulation, starting the simulation, you need to add all these points, okay? And start to sample the solution. Uh, also might be a good idea to add these points in all some other locations, okay? So you can get different, in different regions, you can do your sampling. So we have all those points and those points were all enabled here. So if you open probes, you see that all those points and in a single file, I will save all that information. So I will have one for velocity component U, V, W and pressure. And then you just can plot that information as we have done in during the previous exercise. The monitors, nothing to do here. Okay, stay as they are. Uh, one thing that in monitors uh, here, this one is not necessary anymore. So when you are on a steady, this is not necessarily. So this one you you can add it for a steady simulation. On a steady, you don't need it. You can disable. Uh, we can initialize. Okay. So now that we have an initialization, 
we can run. But remember that we have a solution previously for this Teddy. So why not using that solution? So let's interpolate that solution. And I will go here, interpolate and read data. And you choose your case. So you have one in quad, fine mesh, it's up to you. Okay, you can even take it from the fine. I will do it from the fine mesh. It makes no sense now going from finer to, to quads, but you can do it with no problem. And I will use the simple solution, the one I know I have some nice fluctuation. Now see it was interpolated. And you can go here, contours, and let's see what we have. So this is the field that we're interpolating, okay? And remember that when you are here, as you go here and solve initialize, you can add the fluctuation. So if you want to add another stochastic fluctuation to have something nicer, you can go in it. To... By the way, this option is only available with the uh, runs solvers. If you go to less, it's not available anymore. So you need to do everything in, in a setup of the runs and then you can switch to the less. You put, put it there. You add your stochastic fill and see that we add some noise. Okay. So now that we have this, let's before running, let's save and I call it a uh, piece of one. Okay. So we have initialization, we have everything. And in the methods, by the way, now where you we're using the PISO. There are some other options. For instance, you can choose here the NITA, non in the iterative. So this use another method that you don't need to do uh, the subcycling. Now we're going to do subcycling. You are going to see that. And the NITA in theory is much faster, but however, you need to be careful that your CFL number must be less than one to, to have good accuracy. Instead, when using the ETA, iterative like this one, you can go with large uh, CFL number and then by adding certain iterations, you will guarantee that you will converge the solution within every uh, single time step. We're going to see that in action, okay? So we go here, run, and we can start to run. So remember that here, when we go here, there is no limit, it's up to you. You need to sample the solution, you need to see your signal. Okay, we have done that. So let's run. In th this case, uh, let me show you if we have some solutions here. Okay, so for instance here, this is CFL1, and see that in about starting from the perturbative field, you're already in about six seconds, you, you, you will have enough statistic. However, I run this case up to 20 seconds. Okay, so it's up to you for, for our purpose, let's say for the next time we meet, let's have something about uh, six seconds, okay? Uh, you can have enough, enough statistics. So let me show you all. You have all here, okay? And we're going to save the solution as well to do some post-processing. I will show you how to do that. So now that we have here, our goal now is to choose a time step. So remember, ideally CFL if one that will guarantee good accuracy, but if you have a CFL larger than one, it's also possible you are advanced faster, but you might lose some information in your solution. So here, we need to choose that one, and that is the tricky part. So usually you start with a small time step, Okay, let's put this value here. And you launch the simulation, you monitor your CFL, and then you see if you can go all, you can, if you can go down, okay, but just by monitoring the CFL, that's why we added that monitor there. So let's, I would run. Uh, also as well, you can give the maximum time that you, you, you can run. So you can run this many times, or you can go here and in the text user interface, max flow, time and you say run up to 20 seconds let's say so automatically will stop when you reach 20 seconds so uh what else we need to show you important that now also you need to save your solution every now and then so as you go into calculation activity see here that edit and i'm saving every 500 time step you have the option to put flow time so you can say save every 0 0.5 seconds and how many files, the name of the file, and how many files do you want to retain. So if you disable this one, you will retain every file every 0.5 seconds. So you can use the, 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 those files 
to plot your solution, do your animation. However, as I mentioned previously, I don't like to use Influent files. I prefer to use Insight files, okay? That one, you can set up that here, but before setting up that, we need to just check the, uh, the time step we have the correct level because we need to give a saving frequency. So let me go run and let's run the, the calculation and say, and monitor all our uh, quantities. So see that here we are first time step, usually the first time step, the first 10 or 20, it will take longer to converge. That is perfectly normal. And then it slowly it will accelerate. Uh, but you will also remember that now we're on a steady, do not forget to enable your statistic. Okay. So now we're sampling our statistics. So see that first iteration, it didn't converge. It's doing, see here that here we can say the maximum number of iteration per, for, per time step. So usually 20 is a good value. You can put a larger value, but 20 is already too much. So if you are running and it's taking 20, it might be a good idea to reduce your time step. Okay, in this case it's taken, but remember initial iterations, it will take longer to, to converge. Okay, so let's wait a little bit while, while we get something. So see that our CFL is relative low, 0 0.06, okay? So this means that we can increase it, but still we need to wait a little bit more, no? While all my velocities, everything stabilized and see our receivables. So what is, going ha what is happening here is that this is one time step iterating and then reaching your convergence criteria and then it will move okay so just i see a problem here just let me stop because it should be it should be it should stop so i think in the residuals i have enabled a very low value somewhere so let me go back residuals Okay. Uh, okay. So let me no, 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 no. let me reopen the original case. Okay, the piece of one. So uh, this something this happened when I enabled the Nita auction. It changed my tolerances. So be careful with that also. When you save a piece and then you enable the Nita, be careful because it will enable some other auctions here. So now you see that it will converge then to the minus three. Okay. And we have everything set here. So I will put it, let's put it here. Okay. We have that and let me run. So just to make it clear, let me save another file. I will call it piece one. Now I will call it Nita one. So you say go Nita one, and as you enable this, you will see that. Uh, sorry, you still you still piece of, enable this one. You enable some other options. So as you go here, monitors. See that you can select this one anymore. You need to access that information somewhere else. Okay, so be careful because if you do it, I don't know why, at least in my version, I cannot go back to the original piece. So have a backup piece on it. Okay, so usually the, the convergence criteria of the NITA are much lower than the piece and that's why it was taking longer. So now let me choose The piece, okay, so the piece is right. Okay, we have also the data, I think. Okay, have also the data, the initial condition, we need it. And let's be sure then. Okay, yes, this is a perturbative fill, everything. So I started, let's start from here. Okay, run calculation. We have, uh, let me reduce it a little bit and see that you enable disable the statistic there. Okay, so always enable your statistics. So uh, the point here is that we're starting from the steady solution that is already converged. You have some fields, so you are going to speed up your, your computation. Let me show you uh, if we look here, look at that we have left with initialization, right, no, is an initialization. 
So if see that here and it's starting from initial so, uh, fill and it will speed up my computation. So if I let it run, see that you can save a lot of time by just using an initialization. It doesn't, not, doesn't need needs to be a perfect one. You just need to be a field that is somehow perturbated. And see that the one that it started with uh, from zero, it took longer. So it's not three seconds. You see that maybe in three seconds you see some 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 vertical structure, but it's still you need to let it run a little bit to to so it can stabilize. So probably it's like five or six seconds of the to the point that it's stable. And something that probably in this case it will be fast, but if you have measures about twenty million cells, this this initial transit of four or five seconds can translate maybe in a couple of days of simulation. So that's why we start from a steady simulation, maybe quartz mesh, then interpolate, or even a fine mesh in a old runs, runs, you can go you can go fast. Okay, so this is the less simulation by the way. Okay, so we have, let me reduce this sorry there. And I press calculate, I have everything, we have time. Here is asking the residuals, no, overwrite everything. So remember, as you go back to the directory where you have that, see that you were going to have many files. See that now you have the U file. As you open this file, you will have all the information of these probes. Okay, so you know the coordinates. You can go back and interrogate the, the case files and you will see there the coordinates. And you can extract your information from there. So I see that here, it conversion about let's say almost 20 iterations, which is too much, but slowly it will get faster, faster, faster. Okay, so as we look here, we're going to see the proper behavior. And this point is just waiting. So you need to monitor quantity, CD, CL, see when the solution is statistically uh, steady from a turbulent point of view, and then you can say, okay, I will stop here. So, let it let's let's this solution run and let's see what we have. So see that now uh, it is converging faster. So see that now initially it was taking twenty, now it's taking nine, nine and so on, and then it will be eight, and in one point probably it will be five or four. So it, ideally, when you're running this segregated solo DP, so in eta mode, not the eta you should aim for a convergence between four and eight iterations. So if you are converging between four and eight, that is a good, a good value, okay? That also is telling you that you can increase your CFL number. So as you check here, you have it here, CFL max. So, okay, in this case, it didn't, it didn't take the modification we had. Okay, so see that it's 0, 07, so this is good accuracy. But we can go larger in the CFL number with no problem. So as you go larger, you can expand faster, but you might lose some information in the solution. So I will let this simulation run a little bit and let's see what happened later. Okay, we're back. So see that after a while, it's taking just four iterations to, to convert. So this is ideal, this is what you should aim. However, you see that your CF, uh, CFL is 0 0.7, so you can still increase. So let's do some experiment. So let me go a step here and let me double this number here. Okay, let me see that. So now I will see a jump here, but also in all my quantities due to the fact that we're increasing the time step and it also is likely that it will take longer to converge. However, see that now it will take uh, your, your, your time, you will advance much, much faster. So this will be a compromise. If you want accuracy or you want to go fast. This is something that you can do because we are in Uranus, there is no problem. Unless this is something very delicate and unless you should have a single time step, you shouldn't play with your, your time step. So let's go calculate now. So immediately see that now we see that it's taking longer to converge. It still is within that value you now, so uh, four uh, iterations. And see the CFL 
it is double. Okay, it's almost proportional. You double here, you double your CFL number. And still we can have we can go higher. So let's go and put it 0 0.5. Okay. So I will advance more more faster here. Okay, again we're going to see another jump in residuals. Will take longer to converge. Probably we're almost in the limit, but see that your CFL now is Darker, so meaning that you will advance mo much, much, much faster, but also it takes more iteration. So, this is kind of a compromise. So, previously you were 0 0.001 taking for iteration, now you are 0 0.005, it's taking 10 iterations. So, in this case, it might seem that it's a good choice this one you, because at the end you will have almost the same number of iterations, total iterations. To, to, uh, to, to reach a certain level. But sometimes it might happen that it shows that time step too large, the number of iteration will increase a lot. So it's not, it's not economical. It's not, it's not viable from an economical point of view, from the, the, the point of view of the computing time. So it's, you should monitor all of this and, and get your budget and see if it works. So you will see that now, you see that now it's taking about 10, okay. 10 iterations. So at, the, at, at this level, it was about four iterations. At this level, it's 10 iterations. So at the end of the day, you will see that to reach uh, the f same final time, we are going to have about the same number of iterations, okay? So it is a good compromise to go here and put this CFL. But if I stop now, and now I will go 0 0.01, so you press it. Presenter a couple of times there to just be sure that you are inserting that data. See that we ha have sampled this information there. And you press now calculate. We see a jump in the residuals, but also you will see that it will take longer to iterate. Okay, or 13 iterations. Your CFL is becoming. Uh, Eight, so I'm saying about eight. So the methods implemented in Fluent, they are implicit. So the theory tells that implicit methods are unconditionally stable. Okay, so meaning that you can use any CFL number and they will be stable. But the fact that you can use any CFL number doesn't mean that your solution will be good or it or that it won't come uh, diverge. Eventually, very large time step you will diverge because you're missing completely the physics. Okay, so every all the time is a compromise okay i have been able to run up to a cfl of 50 but i know that my solution i'm missing a lot of information but my goal is was to advance fast okay to get some periods you know to determine some periods of, of my solution and then also you, you advance fast and at one point when you are ready to do the sample that you are going to start to get your good quality uh, simulation you just stop there reduce your time step and start to do your correct sampling there so see is you see you start to run that one you will see that to, to reach this this time here it took probably like five minutes to reach this time here now it was really fast okay you see that advanced larger times that you will advance in physical time much much faster and see that we're kind of capturing some on staying is there it's taking about 14 iterations, so it will be a compromise. Okay, so initially here it was four iterations, so and now it will be 14, but you are running at time set that is 10 times higher. Okay, so yeah, it's a compromise. Now you go four iterations, you multiply 10, 40, so it's still from the computing time you know, of your computational point of view, it works to, to use this this CFL number still you it would be faster than than using a, a small one ten to the minus three. So my, my math was this one. So here you was you it, it was taking uh four iterations now and here it's taking uh fourteen iterations. Okay, so here is you multiply by 10, which is a factor that I'm increasing and increasing from here to here is a factor of 10. This one will be 40. 
and this one here we have 14 okay mean as this is lowest and this one here is economical okay it works so to reach the same time here we'll take 40 iterations here 14 iterations for that time okay so again let's wait a little bit let's see what happened in, in one second okay so it will take a while i know five ten minutes and let's see see you later Okay, we have about one second of simulation using this time step, 10 to the minus two. As you see, in my case, four cores it was relatively fast, like, I don't know, 10 minutes. So you can get an idea how long it will take to get to six or 10, or 10 seconds, okay? So using a large time step is fast, then you will see that you reduce it by order of magnitude, it will take much, much longer. So it's up to you. You can get your, your budget easily by looking at number of iterations. Uh, but in general, your goals should be uh, not to take more than 20 iterations, even for large times, okay? More than 20 start to become expensive. So at this point, uh, let's do, okay, now that we maybe have an idea of a frequency, okay? So see that here we have a period kind of in this so now that we have an, an idea we let me stop it there we can go back to plots uh fft and let's do some signal pro processing and here in plops fft so we can take a look at the input files see that in the directory where you're running you're saving all the files so you can access that and in particular i want to access cl is the one plot and we have time this time signal okay so let me uh click to branch and let me go to 0 0.6 and see that your period uh, 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 let me make it smaller larger sorry so you will have a period of about like 0 0.5 seconds, 0 0.6 seconds. So the idea of knowing a period is like you can now have an idea of your maximum time step. So it's clear that if you choose a time step about 0 0.5, you are missing the whole information. So see that it still were much, much lower than that. Okay. And again, the sense you see it choose 0 0.2 is not large enough to resolve well this period so we are 0 0.01 the largest one so meaning that is your period 0 0.5 you are taking 50 points to resolve which is good let's say that the absolute maximum of point or minimum of point that you need to resolve the period will be something about 30 your time step we are 0 0.5 0 0.01 it was okay and the one 0 0.01 it was even better just you are doing a much better sample but also this is telling us that now we're going to to save the solution just to show you that you're saving frequency okay so if you want to save your solution to do the animation the plot and everything okay you will need at least let's say 10 if you want to plot everything and see the, the, the animation full animation let's say as i mentioned so not like 30 but for us to save the files because those files that that is a lot a lot data we can say that let me save with a frequency of 0 0.05 okay so 0 0.5 will be so like 10 and we're going to save about 10 step 10 steps here and this is the we're going to animate that so that means that here i would save every 0 0.05 okay so to save the solution now you are going to go here calculation activities so see that you can save that already here in time step you can say save it every 0 0.05 you disable this and it will save the fluent file but as i mentioned i don't like to use those fluent files so let's put here zero every 0 0.5 and and only keep the last two uh files but as you go here automatic export solution data here you can save 
in different formats. So see that you have all these formats available. Uh, personally speaking, I really like this one inside case goal. Okay, we can export this one and then open it in the in part of you. Or if you have access to Insight, which is a very good uh, visualizer now for scientific computing, you can use that one. But let's use this one, okay? Then you give it a name to the file that you want to save. Okay, I will call it, I usually call it like this. Uh, tiny step. This so so some other format will give you the option to save every given time. This one only gives you the the option tiny step. But we know already that if you put five there with a tiny step of 0 0.5, 0 .0, 0, uh, 0 0.01, it will give you this saving frequency that we were aiming of 0 0.05. Save in binary is the no center or sole center. It's up to you. Usually I like to put it no center. And here, the select this one means that you are going to have single files for each field. And then here, select all the fields that you want to visualize to save to output. Okay, so remember the more fields that you are selecting, the larger those files will be. Will be. So you see that now you are accumulating a lot of data. Okay, so be careful of your hard drive space or if, if you really need all this data. So in this case, I will keep it to the minimum. Okay, so I will save this and this tree and also maybe the Q criterion okay then you have a statistic see that we're computing a statistic you have these two custom fields also so it's up to you where I will keep it to the minimum okay every now and then save so I would call it pc2 okay and now let's run uh, another another one uh, up to 1.5 okay so let's say that max flow time 1.5 okay and we're going to save a few files and then we're going to so we have done everything for for doing a steady okay so as you go here you let's keep this same time step uh, we're going to save the files, then we're going to have those files that we're going to open it later. But then after we save those files, just to show you, we can go back and reduce this CFL number. You're going to see this, the, the, the difference. But in theory, by reducing this to getting a lower CFL number, we're going to improve the solution. Okay. So calculate. And let's wait a little bit until we arrive to 1.5 seconds. Okay, so in my case, arrived to 1.5 seconds. So see that kind of start to see the periodic behavior now that is maybe reaching uh, or you might reach a uh, statistically steady behavior. So if you take a look at your folder where you, you are running and see that here you have the new, these new files. These are the files that we're going to use for the post-processing. Okay, so you see that here you are saving those fields that you chose and see that those files can become really large. You have a very large mesh, they become they, they can take a lot of space. So be careful about what you save, frequency of saving and everything. So that's why we run initially, we got an idea of time step, periods and everything. So at this point we're running, I hope you get the idea. So if I go here and I reduce my time step, Whatever I do by reducing the time space, just improving the solution, but it will take longer. Okay, so just to make clear well, this concept. So let me put it here. Okay, so I reached the time 1.5, so I need just to increase it here. Not full time, just put it back to 20. Okay, so by reducing the time step, as you look here, your iterative convergence. Okay, so at the beginning, every change will take longer, but see that it, it is uh, going faster. Okay, so maybe it would be a good idea also to to increase the saving frequency frequency of the of the files you now because now we're saving every zero point zero zero five. You know? So what you can do, go back to the activities and just multiply by fifty. Okay, I won't do it, but you got the idea. But see that it's going faster. Okay. 
and you get the point that I was telling about the CFL that now to reach this time here you just measure the clock the clock time from here to here using CFL 10 and probably here it took 10 minutes or, or 20 minutes to reach to to do the same period but this time it probably will take one hour or more okay so you see that it's still affordable and it's still within the 20 iterations limit so it, it was using the the cfl of 0 0.01 because also it was resolving well your frequencies okay so these are things that you need to take into consideration at this level when you are doing urban when you move for for, for less Scale resolving there, your CFL is highly recommended to keep it at one, less than one, probably the maximum will be two. So at this point, uh, let me stop this one here. Okay, you get the idea, you can save everything, you can visualize your fields. Then we're going to visualize the, field, your, the fields. And just to mention something that here, I uploaded some inside files you now that we have one second of sampling. So download that one, okay, will be the same case with a different frequency and more files. So we, we, it's exactly the same that we were saving, but you can download this one and the next tutorial, we, we are going to open this file, okay? And do the post-processing with, with Spalabio. So uh, just to show you, I will stop here. And just to show you about the Nita that we have there. So you can go, no, I won't save. Read, remember that we have a Nita case. Okay, we need the data file. Okay, you can use the previous one for, for piece. So. Okay, but that, that's inside, that's no problem, remove. Okay, so... Okay, that, that was telling me to remove the inside case that we have, okay? In your case, if you want to keep it, just don't remove it, because I know that I don't need it. So, we're going to use the NITA, starting down in the PISO. So remember that NITA. You go here, non iterative, okay. Then P, so you have two options, okay. So you can play around with bias, but let's that's, that's use, for instance, the P1, okay. The idea is you need that is, it is not going to do, you see that here you don't have the inner iteration, it's not doing those iterations, okay. So let's run, but it will be much, much faster. You will, we're going to see that. Okay, so left run, okay, no, overwrite everything. So it's not doing all these 20 or five or four iterations. In this case, it's just one single iteration that it will be converged. This is not, the problem with it is sometimes it's very difficult to assess if it is converging well, okay? So usually would converge well is you keep your CFL number below below one okay so usually the NITA is done for this kind of simulations that you already did that you have a cfl less than one you know that you're going to do your sampling right away with low cfl numbers and usually it will give you a good convergence see here that it's converting very well in just one iteration instead for the previous one it would take it was taking four five ten iterations okay so as you increase the, the time step here, it will still run, but you are going to lose a, lose a lot of accuracy. But you can already see that it's much, much faster. It's advancing much, much faster. So usually for, for, for less, this is the, the recommended method. Usually in less, we're keeping a low CFL number. So this one is recommended. It advances much, much faster. And that it have some also some implementations that you can accelerate even more your your solution. But I, I guess it's quite cl clear that it's advancing faster than the other one. So let's let it let it run for a while. Let's let it run up to 0 0.5 seconds. Okay. So it was relatively fast. 
And yes, so see you later. And we will just take a look at this, okay? Okay, uh, I have reached about 0 0.5 seconds of simulation, so I will stop here. So I hope you, you, you got that, the, the idea of the non-iterative advancement. So this one is used basically uh, when you are sure that you want to, to, to use a CFL less than one. Okay, so the idea basically probably this will be equivalent to the PISO in iterative advancement, but with one iteration, but the piece of one iteration, uh, it has problem or compared instead this one, they need to have some improvement that it will have a better convergence in, in, in comparison to the piece of it. You have another formulation here, the fractional step, very similar, okay, which some improvement, okay. In the in, in the converger, so this one just one iteration, but you, but be careful to have your CFL less than one just to have a good convergence. Uh, so you have been running samples, so now you see that we can have an idea how long it will take. Is you use CFL one or you go CFL two? So what I will do here, just to show you, uh, already have in the files. Also, you have in the website, you have some time series. This time series correspond to two cases, okay? These are less cases now, but pretty much will be the same uh, regarding time uh, for CFL 1 and 10. And see that it's clearly that the, the, there is a difference in the mean values and the CFL 10 probably is over predicting a little bit more. However, it's also capturing some frequencies very well, also the leaf signal, okay? However, for, for good accuracy, we know that we want the signal with the CFL1. And just to show you that both of them are capturing the frequencies, the dominant frequencies, if I do the frequency analysis, okay, I, I look at the leaf signal, see that it's both signals are pretty much the same value. This was the leaf, and for drag it's a little bit different, but again, see, see similar, similar peaks, okay? So as you can see, it managed to capture the same frequency. If you choose a time step too large that you miss the, the frequencies, you won't be able to see the peaks in your frequency analysis. Okay, but we know that 0 0.01 is still, still is okay. Uh, so let's do the same analysis. So I have the signals in the time series. You can open those here. You go F of T. Okay. And you can go here. Low input file. And let me open. So basically here I have a time signal for, for an URA, sim URA simulation. Okay, so not the less. Okay, and let me plot the signal here. So this is the signal. You can compute, I can subtract both. Subtract, I don't need a uh, clip to branch and let me go from four. So we can do the traditional analysis to see when it's becoming a statistically steady. You can get all your statistics here, okay? You can do all your normal analysis of this signal. And you can also plot your power spectral density function. So let me go in axis. So I put lock there, lock there. We get this plot, okay. So if we superimpose here the minus five search, probably, probably here you will see that this one, there is a change in the slopes on some frequencies. So probably this is not resolving very well. We have this large i think this course yeah that's no, one okay but it's everything is being model okay so you can do your traditional analysis here always remember you have that capability and also let's post process the data because now we, we run that one you will get the fields again you get lco and see that it's very different what, what, what we have now we have the actual vortex shedding you can get rl 
and see that this one since that the values are much lower than five okay and just to remind you that we are working in the quartz mesh okay so see that it's telling that probably the largest vortex is, is resolving but you have the others that it's not resolving well so again this is the quartz mesh as you move and do the same with the fine mesh you will get much much better better results okay so let me here so this place there and for instance you can also get in surfaces the Q criterion isosurface and the domain velocity Q criterion compute okay let's put 100 and let's plot you should have it here. I don't want that. And actually, I don't want to see the couplings. And see, there you have the vortices. And already, you see that kind of some stretching. Okay, so this was this case. Uh, then I steady, so I will stop here. You got the idea how to do everything. So you let it run by probably some five seconds or probably eight seconds. You can do it. Uh, you will get enough statistics, but also save the last uh, time step interpolate. Say the interpolation file, and we can switch back to define mesh with a less and run try to run a less in that mesh okay so with this i will stop here the next tutorial we are going to open the inside files to do the post processing in paraview see you next one